Zechariah chapter 6. And I turned and looked upon my eyes and looked. I lifted up my eyes and looked. And behold, there came four chariots out between two mountains. And the mountains were mountains of brass. Uh, no vegetation. There are places in the Bible where that brass God speaks about the heavens being brass and iron, no rain. The first chariot, now this focuses on the chariots, and then we come to horses, but we've already dealt horses in chapter 1, verses 8 to 11. Remember those horses, you know, go out, their eyes of the Lord. The first chariot were, black, were red horses. Now these are not the horses of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Don't be running over the revelations. They're different. You got to rightly divide the scripture. Red horses. The first horse of the apocalypse is white. It's not right. The second chariot was black horses. The third chariot, white horses. Now they're plural. The four horses of the apocalypse, there are one horse each. And the four bristled and bay horses. And it had to have been a, 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 a sight to see that God is using all these things as illustration, as he does. And this is the picture of Jesus in his ministry and the men of God used throughout the Bible, where Pharaoh has a dream of, of kind and, and wheat, Jesus talks about a sower and the seed. This is to give us, okay, we know what a chariot looks like. We know what horses. We know what plants look like. If not, we today we have the internet, we can look up pictures. Then I answered, this seems to be a recurring theme of Zechariah, and said to the angel that talked with me, What are these, my Lord? Small L. And the angel answered and said to me, These are the four spirits of the heavens. So they are not physical horses and chariots if they're spirits. The Bible says God is a spirit. These are lightly used the term ghost horses. Which go forth from standing before the Lord, capital L, of all the earth. So these are sent out by God. If man were to get as Paul described his blindness, the scales off his eyes, and what Paul's scales were, was he was blinded and he could not see. And then at that moment, I think it was Antipas. And maybe the men that were with him going to Damascus. If we were to get scales removed off our eye to see what is going on in the world, in the spirit world around us, you would be amazed and you would be amazed to see what Christians celebrate and honor of the devil and demonic world. And the world of God. The Christians today, I know a bunch of Christians right now, they're, they're fabricating that NASA wants to launch off this spacecraft to the moon named after a fallen God. You didn't think about that. They were five guys when we went to their church, but they were they were putting off the dragon's race crowd. Th that did not come into your mind. And yet, if you were to see the spirit world that's out there right now, you wouldn't need Dungeon Dragons and, and Harry Potters and all that. It would be around us. You wouldn't be realizing the fact is that there are satanic angels, there are godly angels, and they are in the realm of working your life. 
Now, how far we got to you know, protecting angels and that, I don't know. But I have seen in public ministry with dealing with people, I've seen a spirit of the unholy angels where I've not seen them. I've seen them come in and I've seen them take away the moment of God and glory. You say, well, paint a picture, draw a picture, get a Kodak. You're not going to be able to. You would be amazed if you were to see Satan today. Now, the world would have you to picture a red man with a pitchfork and that, that, that tail. I think you would be very shocked to realize that Satan would look like your average preacher. Satan would look like, look like your average Christian. Satan would look like a fish's head. Satan would look like a reptile. So there is, the Bible says, there is this spirit, spiritual world that even we don't even know. The black horses, which thereof go forth from the north country, the white go forth after them, and the gristle go forth toward the south country. So there are directions. The bay went forth and sought to go that might walk to and fro through the earth. That's what Satan did in Job 1 and 2. Get you hence. Walk to and fro through the earth. That's what Satan did. Job 1 and 2. So they walked to and fro through the earth. It, on this earth and in this earth. Now we've got or have in the Bible a revelation, but you need to realize it was a dream. That Jacob is asleep and he sees a ladder from the heaven to the earth. He's, the Bible says it's a dream. And angels ascending and descending. But we need to realize that there are Holy and unholy angels moving about. You don't realize that right now in your body, this technology of 2022, you got radio stations going through. Your neighbors, if they're on a the cell phone, that's going through you. Television waves are going through you. The light spectrum of the sun, radiation. We live over by a hospital, and it's a good distance away. But I mean, they have—I've been tested there with, with nuclear imagery, and all. that could be affecting me. I have been up against with the jobs I've had. I have been up against a nuclear power plant, active and going. I've gone up to the gate of the nuclear power plant, and it's right there. I could pick up a rock when I was younger. I could throw a rock. I could hit that building. I have worked on United States nuclear ballistic submarines. I have walked by the nuclear compartment. And who, who knows what else was there. I have been involved with, with, with welding and all kinds. My lungs have been infiltrated of all the breathing and effects of the metallurgy of building submarines. It's all around us. In the spirit world, you look at the fact is, I don't know if you can see, but I'm wearing my oxygen. And I've been sick. But do you realize you're breathing the same air that your cat is breathing? You are breathing the same air that a rattlesnake breathes and an alligator. You are breathing chemicals inside you you don't even see. You don't see the breath that the person next to you. They could be breathing out COVID. Why well, you have to wear the mask? You didn't see it. But then when it gets in you, there's all kinds of things. 
Listen, there's plenty to believe in the Bible than the, than the other nonsense that's out there. <coughs> then cried he upon me, this is the angel who spake unto me, saying, Behold, these go forth toward the north country and have quieted my spirit. This is the angel speaking. In the north country. I'm going to tell you, I don't know all the Bible. I don't know what this, what this this chariot and horses and what it meant to quiet the spirit of the angel. Things are going well. He, he went forth and he come back and said, hey, things are good. When the angels went into Sodom, they reported back to God, <laughs> it's wicked here. Well, Listen, Abraham's praying, get Lot out. Uh, God, he don't want to go. Well, you better grab that boy by the arm. You better yank his arm out. Well, Lord, he don't want to go to the mountain. He wants to. Okay, whatever needs to be done, just get him out. Abraham is praying, I'm going to destroy that. And then there, there would be, when you let's look at the Bible, Jonah goes to the Nineveh, go to hell. And angels, whatever, report back to God. God, you won't believe what just happened. What? They're down there repentant. They're in sackcloth. They got the cows in sackcloth. The king has stepped off the throne. I know I hear it. It's true. It's happened. Listen, this is in the Bible that God sends these angels out there to report back to him. We saw this in Moses. God, you know, you can't wipe them out. Remember what you said to the Egyptians? Remember what the Egyptians said? And Jesus Christ, when, when God's angry with the church, hey, this Father, you know, I paid for that. I paid for them. I suffered and died for them. And he realized that the Holy Spirit makes groanings and, and, and appeal to God in prayer for what we can't. And actually, you know, listen, I felt complete despair. I felt I'm alone and all that. I'm saved. I'm a child of God, but I'm not alone. There's a church that we know we were in. You know, come Holy Spirit, come, you're welcome here. Listen, if you're saved, the Holy Spirit's already inside you. And if you smoke cigarettes and drink alcohol, you are subjecting God to those sins. You look upon a woman of lust after that Holy Spirit inside you. You are in a realm of the spirit world. And you know what the dangers of a new age and the dangers of religion and the dangers of, of devilish and, and, and dungeons and dragons? To a point, it's real. But it could be deceptively unreal. To make you believe in the opposite. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying. Take of them with the captivity of Heldei. And Tobijah. And as Zediah. However they pronounce. Which are come from Babylon. Come thou the same day and go into the house of Josiah the son of Zephaniah. And take silver and gold and make crowns. And set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Josiah, Joesedek, the high priest. And we talked about last time, Joshua. This is the high priest in the time they are in the land. Building the temple. Let me get my mouth. There's no king in Israel unto Jesus. But there are a high priest. There was a high priest when Jesus was in the land. Now no more. The high priests are gone because Jesus is the great high priest. And speak unto him saying, Thus speaketh the Lord, that's Jehovah God, opposed everything. Behold the man whose name is the branch, that's Jesus, 
And we've already looked at that before. Look at my notes here. This branch is Jesus. And even Jesus talks about himself being the vine. We're the branch. He's the root and offspring of, da uh, of David and Judah. Jesus is the whole branch. He's the whole plant. He is the tree of life that Adam and Eve rejected. That God said, hey, I guess... Unless you take forth of that fruit and you live forever. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That tree is before God's throne in heaven now and will be in New Jerusalem. Listen, the Christian doesn't produce the, the fruit. It's God. It's Jesus. shall grow up out of his place heaven the throne and shall build the temple of the Lord there's the millennial temple now right now you're looking at a temple that is going to be built in Ezra but that's not the temple here because that temple is going to fall again even he shall build the temple of the Lord now, Ezekiel talks about this temple in the millennium, and it's to the fact is that there will be a temple in the tribulation period marred and I'm trying to think, making detestable by the Antichrist. That there's going to be a temple built by Jesus. A holy and godly temple unlike all the other temples has ever been built since Solomon. That temple that Solomon built and on has been disgraced, has been deceived, it's been dishonored, it has been polluted, it has been the worship of gods and falling gods, and it, 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 they stripped the gold off the doors to pay off their debt. You're not going to do that with Jesus' temple. And there's far more than what Solomon built, and more than what Moses built, and there are even rules that are not in the law that Ezekiel tells us. That's going to be that when you come in through one door, you're going to go out the opposite door. You know, people may, oh, you know, Jesus was in the Holy Land, and Jesus was in the temple, but 70 A.D., that temple where the footprints of Jesus gone. Whatever Jesus wrote on the ground with that woman that committed adultery has been stepped on, been trampled on, and been swept, and then sheep and whatever's walked all over. You're not going to do that with what Jesus built. And shall bear the glory. And shall sit and rule upon his throne. That's the branch. That throne is the throne of David. Given to David's offspring. The king of kings, the lord of lords. Now, listen. God's government is not the democracy. is not the president. It's not Republicans. not Democrats. It is Jesus Christ. It's a theocracy of a monarch of God. And once Jesus Christ takes that throne, no one's ever going to sin. We talk about, oh, we broke away from England and all that and everything. Queen Victoria said, if Jesus Christ came in my time, I would get off my throne I would sit him on that throne and take off my crown and put it upon his head. You would have no king or president ever give the seat in the Oval Office to Jesus. None. Because we don't have a throne in America. 
and he shall be a priest upon his throne. That's Jesus. Jesus, who is king and is also high priest, found in the book written to the Hebrews called Hebrews. He's a prophet, priest, and king. Only David fulfilled that office. And Solomon made me too. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Well, Jesus is the prince of peace. Jesus said God's peace is unlike the world's peace. I mean, the world may have peace, but it's only temporal. It don't satisfy. It don't last. And the crowns, plural, shall be to Helam and to Bajah, however you say their name, to Jedediah and to Hen, the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. Now, there will be in the millennium, there will be the bride of Jesus. And I'm going to say many will be wearing crowns. Some will even be given a right to an inheritance, and that's all based upon what they do with Jesus in their life. There will be many Christians who will have no crowns. They will have no inheritance. Because their life has been totally given to self in the world. Wouldn't it be interesting as a Christian to be wearing crowns in the millennium with the crown of Jesus Christ? With the crown of these men serving the temple. That crown would be, hey, I've got a reward. I've got a little authority. Do you realize the President of the United States, any of them, he could go walking down the street in his clothing of the President of the United States. You would have no idea who he was. If you would get Queen Elizabeth now, if she would go, I know she's old and everything, but if she would have an event and it would say, Queen, dress up as a queen, you would know her to be the queen because she would be wearing her crown. I don't even think Russia, if they would dress the, the president of Russia, you're going out to a, to a big fancy Russian. I don't think he has a diadem of honor. There will be Christians, and I'm looking at the Christian part, they will be in the millennium to say, I got this crown because of my service to Jesus. It was he that put this crown on my head and said, well done. And that there will be other Christians that, hey, listen, we, we pray, we try to teach you, we try to tell you, but you wanted your own way. Today, there are places where, you know, you got red team and blue team and everybody gets a crown, everybody gets a reward. We just That's not going to happen. If you don't earn a, 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 a crown or reward or inherit, you're not getting it. For a memorial in the temple of the Lord, and that's to say, hey, these men are worthy. I don't think there would ever have been of all the realm of kings and monarchs. I don't think, and, and maybe a complete, absolute secret. I don't think anybody would walk into where a crown is kept of a ruler and anybody just take that crown and put it on their head. I, I wouldn't even dare. Because that king, unlike the power of America, 
<laughs> all he had to do, listen, you know, all they, as far as Heyman, they put him on his game. Yeah. They covered his head. Boom. There was no question. The king said, hey, the cupbearer, he's back to doing his job. The baker, hang him. Boom. That was no question. Take off John the Baptist's head. There was no question. You know, there was no question. And that in the millennium, there will be the marks and the honors of rewards and say, hey, I feel sorry for those Christians who won't have such. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. So there will be, this is not Ezra and Nehemiah, because Tobiah and them come and say, let us take part in right now. No, no, this is our work. And that angered Tobiah and the Arabians. Because their motives weren't clean. But they're going to be here, people, hey, we're going to help build. Now, when Solomon built his temple, the Bible says, man, they, he put them under servitude. He put them under taxation. When they came to his sons, they said, please, we need relief. Ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. They're not doing it right now, what we read in Zechariah. They've not been doing what we've been reading of the past prophets. God sent a couple prophets, get back to work, will you? Well, you know, we got our houses and all that. And yet my temple, listen, okay, fine. You bring home that paycheck, and that paycheck don't go to nothing. That's what's going on in America right now. You ain't giving it to the Lord. You may think you are. You're not. 